welcome back. I'm Master Sergeant Retired Anna Maria Bliven, and this is Veterans Onward to Prosperity. Welcoming in our virtual studio, Rocky Blyer. Oh my gosh, we are so privileged to have you here for so many yeah, different reasons. It's always a pleasure being with you. Thank you. <laughs> for so many different reasons. For one thing, you are a fellow veteran, and I salute you for your service. Well, Master Sergeant, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Coming from a from coming from a spec four, so I, I know my rank. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's like we all have our jobs to do right. in the roles, right? And we're we're playing them, we're doing them. We never really stopped serving, did we, Rocky? No, not really. You know, I mean, I think it's uh, part of the makeup of, of of those who serve their country uh, and uh, part of their belief system is that you always have an opportunity to give back of one nature or another, and especially uh, for um, the experiences that we've gone through, those who have served and want to help their fellow veteran uh, along the way. And those that, that need a hand up, uh, you're, you're there to be able to give it to them. Yes, you said a hand up. You know, not that we are going to be talking that if you give a hand out, you're giving somebody a fish and they're eating for one meal. But if you give a hand up, now you're teaching them how to fish. And now <laughs> they can have they can have as many fish meals as they want. <laughs> <laughs> and you're right. You well, know, and, and, and you're right. And I think that, you know, I think one of the things in, in, in which you've done so very well is uh, bring uh, to, uh, to, to your viewers and, and to your listeners um, just that, you know, the fact that there's a lot of, of, of people out there that do need a, a, a hand up and along the way, a, a push in one direction, uh, but also a helping hand to be able to get to that point where uh, they're, they're willing to take that step um, forward. And so that, the, you know, and a lot of it is to, within your own community that uh, I really believe that you can make an impact, you as a listener. You don't necessarily have to be in a national program, but you look around and see what takes place. And uh, small, um, and, and you just never know when, <laughs> when, when a smile or uh, a, a thank you and or um, uh, how can I help you or what can I give you goes a long way that somebody cares um, about another fellow being and 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 usually that fellow being is uh, somebody that has problems you know to put themselves in the situation where they're they're dealing with with a, a lot of uh, situation a lot of mental situations um, that have been either caused by their experiences in combat and or serving their country or being first responders um, and so uh, we try to try to do the best we can to be able to, you know, help them. Yes. And with that, there's resources and sources that come with the organizations that you're we, that we want to showcase in this time together. And right. one of them is Warrior to Citizen. Can you explain a little bit more about that one? Well, you know, Warriors to Citizens. It, 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 so we've all heard about the statistics. Uh, mental health problems that veterans specifically go through, post-traumatic stress, um, divorce rates, and especially over the last 20 years um, of, of uh, multiple deployments within our military families uh, is taken its toll on, on the family structure. And given the fact is that, you know, let's just say normally here, <laughs> In, in the world, a divorce rate is around 50%. Well, all of a sudden you put strains and stress on it and the first deployment that goes up to 60, 65%. You do multiple deployments, all of a sudden that divorce rate is up to around 80%. So in this case is that military service affects not only the soldier, but it affects the family, it affects yeah the wife and the kids and how they approach life thereafter. So what, what needs to be fixed in this case is specifically that, you, you know, there's programs out there for the soldier himself to be able to take a look at what he has done. But what becomes so important, and this is what Warrior to Citizens does, what becomes so important is that family core and family structure uh, and the lives that it touches there. And that becomes the single most important factor 
in Warriors to Citizen, make that transition. And, you know, and the great thing I like about this program is that it's, it's supported by uh, military bases around the country, uh, and it's done by professionals uh, within the counseling aspect of it. And it's free, and there's follow-up, and there's continuous follow-up, uh, which becomes very important. We can do a lot of things, um, you know, on a one-time basis, but it's usually that follow-up that becomes so important that somebody cares. And, you know, if I have a question, I, 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 can, I can talk to somebody uh, that I've, I've got a relationship with. So, so that's what Warriors to Citizen does on that, on that basis. And so that becomes, I think, very, very important in, uh, in, in helping those who, in that transitional period, you know, are having, you know, uh, structural or family problems. Yeah, because you know what happens is during the, the, the deployment process itself, there's a lot of emotions, a whole bunch of emotions. Sure. And then if you're getting fed information while you're in the emotions, how much of that is actually going to be retained or even heard, right? Right. Right. You know, and then in the demobilization, there's even more emotions, right? Very much so. You know, and so, you know, and so you, what you have, you know, in, in, in this case over, over, over the war in the Middle East is that given our technology, you know, you have a foot in two different worlds. I'm going back to going back to Vietnam, Korea, and so on. You, you know, we didn't have that technology. And the best we could do is write letters, you know, and that would be a two to three week delay by the time they would get the, the, the letters and so on. Now you get instant communication um, where you're trying to do your job and all of a sudden, you know, family's got a problem and you think that you need to solve it, but you can't because you're thousands of miles away. Uh, and, but that doesn't take away from the emotion or the strain uh, of, of, of knowing what is, what is happening back at home. And then, you know, so then you have a, a then you got a family structure and you have a wife that maybe takes charge. Uh, and so, and then when you come back, well, she's taken charge over this period of time. And now you want to come back and invade her, her, her world, so to speak. And so that, you know, just that kind of tension, you know, has problems. Not that I'm a professional on that, but I've just seen it and talked to uh, so many people that that has occurred. So it, it, there's, so you need, so you need a family structure uh, and just somebody to understand that family structure to be able to, 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 uh, to heal it. Right. And to offer some suggestions and some ideas and some thoughts that when you're in the midst of all of that, you're not going to think about them. No. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. right. And so it just becomes, you know, that, um, um, that you, that you, you can't, that you can't think about them in the, in the, in, in the, although you think about it, but you can't, but it, so you get this pulling that goes on and on within, within yourself. Right. And it helps to have some a voice of reason. It always helps to have a voice of reason. I've seen it over and over and over again, where people have come back from the war expecting things to be the way they were before they left. And it's not so. No. You know, it's and you know, I think we need to I think we need to right at the mobilization site and the deployment site to set up that expectation. No, you and and you're right, and and and, and you know, and part of the role uh, is is that chaplains play a very strong part in 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 in, in having somebody to be this, the, 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 the voice of reason, to be able to be a sounding board. Um, and, and the trust that soldiers have in their, in their chaplains, um, whether you're religious or not, but becomes very important uh, of, as an attachment. And so there's a, there's a, there's a heavy role by, by chaplains. And of course they can't be everywhere with everyone, but um, it, 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 I just want to be able to point that out and say thank you for all those chaplains that have oh, served yeah. and continue to serve because uh, they do a, 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 a yeoman's job in, in trying to keep the sanity together. Yes, and, and, and I join you with that salute and that shout out. So we're gonna continue this conversation, so don't go away, we'll be right back. <laughs> 